This is the day the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Well, good morning and welcome. Uh, just a reminder here, as we uh, look through the bulletin at the announcements here, we are asking that um, you take note of the special event for choir. Um, we're going to be singing on Good Friday and Easter Sunday, and we invite you to come sing with us. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, please see Dan here for that, and you can read about it in the uh, uh, bulletin here. Just a reminder that we still have Wednesday service for Lent, and you are welcome to come to those, so please uh, keep that in mind. And if you can, take a look at our church financials and continue to pray for our congregation here. With all of that said, our sermon is entitled today, The Tree of Jesus. And we'll get more in, into that later on. So with all of that said, with a, a willing heart, we'll begin by singing the opening hymn, Christ Be My Leader, hymn number 871. And you'll find that it's actually him 861. What, what is 861. it? 861. 861, what he said. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? With you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition together as his people. Let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a poor, miserable sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you have declared us to be your children and to gather us into your only holy Christian and apostolic church, in which you daily and richly forgive our sins, and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, 
and graciously receive our prayer and praise. To your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For the Lord knows the way of righteous. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. And you destroy those who speak lies. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. first lesson for the third Sunday in Lent is from the 33rd chapter of Ezekiel, beginning with verse 7. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, and you will have delivered your soul. And you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, thus have you said, surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we rot away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, declares the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? And you, son of man, say to the people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver them when he transgresses. And as for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall by it when he turns from his wickedness. And the righteous shall not be able to live by his righteousness when he sins. Though I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, yet if he trusts in his righteousness and does injustice, none of his righteous deeds shall be remembered. But in his injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, though I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, yet if he turns from his sin and does what is just and right, if the wicked restores the pledge, gives back what he has taken by robbery, and walks in the statutes of life, not doing injustice, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the sins that he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is just and right, he shall surely live. Let your people say, the way of the Lord is not just, when it is their own way that is not just. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. And when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is just and right, he shall live by them. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, I will judge each of you according to his ways. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
second lesson for the day is from the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning at verse 1. I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of, of them, God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality, as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. There were some present in that very time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it, and he found none. And he said to the vine dressers, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone for this year, until I dig around it and put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the Spirit. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. 
Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue then with our next hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, hymn number 809. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text then for this third Sunday in Lent is from the Gospel of Luke, which was just read a few moments ago, and it'll serve as the basis for this morning's meditation. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as you were driving here this morning, what did you see? I'm sure that many of you have noticed a simple tree or two. And as you were driving here, I'm sure that you've also noticed that those trees along the road, they show no signs of life. You might even have noticed some big holes where trees once stood. More importantly, as you were driving along this morning, you might have encountered 
places where groves of trees have been cut down. All of this you see on one hand. But on the other hand, if you take a close look at your bulletin, you will see a fig tree, and it has leaves. But nowhere in there is there any fruit. The scene this morning, as you were driving in, that you have experienced on your way and our look at the bulletin. Those two together gives us a clear crystal shot of what our gospel lesson is talking about this morning. And that there are two ways in this world. There is the way of eternal damnation and, of course, the other, which is eternal life. St. Augustine once wrote, Wherever we are, whatever we are, we are certainly not what we ought to be. Now if you think about that for a moment, that's so true. We're not what we ought to be. Even St. Paul confirms this in Romans, the 7th chapter, the 15th verse, where he says, For what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate... I always do. You see, Jesus begins his parable this morning by saying, A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he tells us the parable. Jesus expects us to understand that God is the one with the vineyard. And that we are the fig tree in that vineyard. God planted us in that vineyard. St. Paul the Apostle also reminds us that we are also being planted together. That means in Christ's death and in His resurrection. Like gardeners everywhere, God plants with the expectation of a harvest. And according to the sixth verse of our text, we see here that Jesus tells us that He came seeking looking for fruits, and found none. Matthew chapter 3, verse 8, tells us the fruit that God seeks is for one to acknowledge their own sinfulness. And he asks God for forgiveness. But here's the thing, the point which St. Paul is getting at. But not everyone or every plant bears fruits. And it's so true, isn't it? Just look around, and you see a bunch of, of empty holes. People used to sit in these seats. Seats that used to be occupied by someone whom God himself planted that person there. So we have to ask the question today, when did those holes appear? For some, it had been months. Others disappear a year or more or two or three ago. But now, how many of us have really noticed? The question I have is, did we fail these living trees whom God himself planted in the likeness of Christ's death and resurrection? Did you and I ever offer them extra life-saving attention that they need to produce fruit? And did we ever dig around them, if you will, fertilizing their roots and adding water so that they may grow? Did we as a congregation give them everything they need to be full and thriving and fruit-bearing? But there is a story to be told here. A story is told of a little boy who planted an oak tree when he was very young. He planted it there at his home in the backyard. And once planted, he visited it every single day. He gave it special attention. And he watered it daily. Soon the leaves began to sprout and grow and to fill every branch. And the boy, he fertilized it. And he anchored it, hoping that it would grow tall and straight. 
The little boy also cultivated the soil around it. He removed the rocks and cut away the dead branches. Sometime down the road, as years passed, the tree grew and became strong. And soon the tree produced acorns, which provided food for many. The big leaves have created a safe place for many to gather. The little boy was so proud that tree grew to be so strong. However, as time went on, the young boy grew up and became a young man. And he soon went away, off to college, as it were. Years later, he returned to his home, and he found that the tree that he had planted as a child was now dead. There were no acorns. The tree that he once planted was now gone. It was uprooted and blown over by the winds. The little boy began to weep. But through it all, the now young man couldn't believe his eyes. There, right in front of him, amongst all the debris, was a little remnant, a seedling that was growing. You see, that's how it is, isn't it? That is always our hope. It's our hope because, as we see in today's text, the tree of Jesus' innocent death now bears fruit for life. That is it all who believe in him. You see, here's the thing. You and I were planted in the soil of God's vineyard. Right here, in beautiful Savior. You and I were planted in the soil of God's vineyard, which is his church. We're planted in God's vineyard so that you and I might mature and grow and bear fruit in his kingdom. Unfortunately, there are those who have become complacent. Some of us of whom God planted didn't bear fruit, and they left the empty holes throughout the vineyard. You know, just like those trees you've seen along the way. So the question I pose for all of us here today is simply this. What will God find here in a few years from today? When he comes looking for some fruit in our lives? Will God be pleased with us as trees in his vineyard? Will we bear fruit, the fruit of repentance? You see, God is on our side. He wants us to flourish and to bear fruits. He says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Therefore, my dear friends, Jesus intervenes and intercedes on our behalf. You see, Christ's death right there on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, and his ascension into heaven, it gives us forgiveness, life, and and salvation. It gives us another opportunity to bear the fruit of our faith. Through the law, Jesus digs down to the root, and he exposes our sin. And through the gospel, he grants us forgiveness, blessings, life. You see, Jesus provides spiritual growth. And he enables us to grow and to bear the fruit of repentance. My dear friends, here's the thing. The fruit from Golgotha's tree, it saves us. It is our call to go and to share our fruit to the world. You see, it is your obligation as well as mine to share the message of God's love and grace to all. It is our task by the power of the Holy Spirit, to plant new trees, to revive those trees that once stood among us. So what you saying, Pastor? What is it that you want? I want you to call a friend, a family, a son, a daughter, a member that hasn't been here in a while. And I want you to say, come. Welcome back 
to God's house. Today and every day, God himself provides everything that we need to escape that burn pile. Jesus himself does every possible thing for his baptized believers can bear fruits and live. This is why we celebrate Passion Week. Because Jesus gets his hands dirty. He digs down beneath our topsoil. And he exposes the root of our sin. He makes us the old dried up tree. Bear fruits. Come to life. And that, my friends, is acceptable to God the Father. Jesus, our Savior, has made the way of escape from the sin and evil of this world and by his glorious resurrection, has indeed opened to us the way of everlasting life. That is the message that I want you to share. To help your brother and sister, your friend, your family, your son, your daughter, bear the fruit that we are called to do. In his name, amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We will continue with our offering, and then we will sing hymn number, that's from the songbook, hymn number uh, 22, The Power of the Cross. Finish the 
victory cry. Raise the bar of the cross. Christ became sin for us. Took the blame for the wrath we To see my name written in the wounds, for through your suffering I am free. Death is crushed to death, life is mine to Please stand for prayer. Let us pray. O oh, Almighty God, you order and you number our days according to your wisdom. Grant to us sincere hearts that we would hold fast to Christ for life and for salvation. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, gracious Lord, bless your church. Let her hold fast to the preaching of the gospel. Give pastors the courage to stand firm in the teaching of the proclamation of the church. Give to all Christians the desire and the strength to defend that message. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Oh, gracious Lord, we pray for our church here at Beautiful Savior. And we ask, oh Lord, that you would grant to us your will. Be with us as we go about making decisions for the future. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, guard your people against all immorality. Enable them to come to the truth, to experience the joy and peace that are in you. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would enlighten the authorities of this country and the leaders of other nations that they may fight for justice and what is good. We bless those who are experiencing war, O oh Lord, and we ask, O oh Lord, that you would grant to your people, the people of Ukraine, peace. We pray for this war to end. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, we pray for those who are sick, for those who are frail, for those who are near death. In our prayers this morning, we lift up before you, and we ask for healing as we pray for Sue Frolic, who is hospitalized, and Chris Ransom, Dick Beck, Marilyn Henning, Chris Meyer, Anita Roslick, Bob Shinglesock. We pray for upcoming surgery for D. Lenz. And we give you thanks that Harold Junick is now home, recovering. Deliver those who are in need, O Lord, and grant to them the comfort and the assurance of your great love, knowing that you are with them. Lord, in your mercy. Great in our midst is the Holy One of Israel, 
one who visits us this day with his body and blood. Give to all who partake of this Holy Communion sincere and penitent hearts, so that they may properly receive Christ's body and blood for their strength and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, you led your people Israel through the sea, and you fed them in the wilderness until you delivered them to the promised land. You also have faithfully enlivened your people with Christ by means of holy baptism and holy communion. Receive our thanks for your kindness to the saints who now rest from their labors. Sustain us by your means of grace until the day it is that you deliver us. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We'll continue then on page 6 of the service folder. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should in all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, for the countless blessings that you so freely bestow on us and all of creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into the flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and rise again to newness in life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and we magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, short with glory of your name. Sing Hosanna to the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all of creation, for you have had mercy upon us and given us your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient temple, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifested the fullness of your glory in human flesh. We give you thanks that in his most holy supper. You reveal your glory to us. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us then as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. <clears throat> Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks he gave it to him saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, in this life we must endure temptation and suffering, but grant to us that we be made steadfast in trial. And if we fall, be rescued by your mercy, restored through your absolution and nourished by your holy sacrament to abide in Christ all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive then his eternal blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. You may be seated. Before we close with our closing hymn, I would just like to remind you and call your attention that there's some inserts in your bulletin. So please take the time. If your address or email or phone number or anything has been changed, fill it out and leave it on the back. Um, if, if it remains the same, then just leave it. Um, Easter lily and daffodil order forms, please um, be mindful of that so that we can meet the deadline and so forth. So keep that in mind. We also need volunteers to help us with, yes, we're going to have Easter morning breakfast. I don't mind cooking eggs, Gail. Okay? Put me down for helping before service. Okay? So we need uh, people to help cook and set up and take down, so please do that. And please just grab onto a friend, a neighbor, a family member, somebody who hasn't been in church in a while, and just say, We love you and we want you to come back. So please do that. Because we have a wonderful thing here at Beautiful Savior. So let's share that message. Please read all the announcements. With that, we'll close with a grateful heart by singing, Guide Me, O Thy Great Jehovah, hymn number 918. Let me safe on Canaan's side Songs of praises, songs of praises I will 